Well, praise God. Welcome to our program today. I want to welcome all our FCI Rayma family, uh, partners, friends, and everybody that is watching us from wherever you are. The Lord bless you. And we are truly glad to have an opportunity to share God's word with you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning to get your Bible, get your notebook, get a pen as we're going to share God's word today. And the title of my message this morning is Seize the Moment. So I want you just to bow your heads as we just pray that the Lord will bless the, pre the preaching and the reading of His Word this morning. Father, we just want to thank You this morning for another opportunity, Father God, to share Your precious Word. Father, we thank You, O God, that, Lord God, Your Word has the power to heal, to save, to deliver, to restore, to make whole, O God. And I thank You in Jesus' blessed name, Father, as we share Your precious Word this morning. I thank you, Lord, O oh God, that the people of God will be built up. They will be edified, O oh God. They will be full of faith in the name of Jesus. I thank you now, O oh God, that every promise in your word is true. And Father, we grab a hold of your promises this morning by faith. I thank you, Father, that, Lord, O oh God, you anoint my vocal cords to share your word with your people. And I pray, Father God, that everybody who is under the influence of my voice will receive this word. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, like I said to you, my message to you this morning is about seizing the moment. Now, I want to share with you from the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 6. And here's an account of the Syrian army that was at war and uh, they came up against the king of Israel. And what happened was the king of Syria had planned a plot against Israel. And he had chosen a specific location where he would actually set up camp so that he could fight the nation of Israel. But God spoke to the man of God, Elisha. And Elisha then instructed the king of Israel on what to do. Um, concerning the king of Syria, so much so that the king of Syria was bewildered and he was confused and he began thinking that there was somebody amongst their own that was leaking out information to the king of Israel. And we find in verse number 12, one of his servants says to him, None, my lord king, but Elisha the prophet who is in Israel tells the king, of Israel, the words that you speak in your bedroom. Friends, I want to share with you this morning, there's nothing that the enemy can do to you that God is not aware of. God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. And one thing is that no matter what comes up against you, God is aware of it. Right now, you find that I'm sharing the word of the Lord with you from my living room due to the lockdown. Uh, that's, you know, purely because of the pandemic that we have of the COVID-19 virus that has gone rife throughout the world. And there are many people that are running to and fro. But this morning, the, word, the, the Lord has given me a word to assure you that all is well. All is well, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the statistics, all is well. Because we do not go by statistics, friend. We go by faith. We go by the Word of God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. So our faith is in the Word of God. So this morning, that was what God is sharing with you, is that God is aware of what is happening. And God is fully in control of what is happening. So do not be afraid. And we find here that the king of, of uh, Syria in verse 13 says, Go and see where Elisha is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying that surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. My word! And they came by night and surrounded the city. Now consider this. An entire army, horses and chariots, sent for one man. <laughs> one man and one man alone, they had to surround an entire city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, 
There was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So Elisha answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike this people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Wow, praise God. What an awesome God we serve. Consider this, friend. An entire army coming after one man. So it doesn't matter how many viruses are after you. It doesn't matter how many armies are coming up against you. When you have God on your side, you are a majority. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. The servant of Elisha is probably like many of you this morning. You know, when you turn on the television, when you pick up your mobile device, when you pick up a tabloid, whatever it is, you know, you always just see that the, the, the rate of infection, the infection rate is increasing. And you are looking at the number of deaths and all that type of things. Friends, yes, it is good we have the knowledge that there is something that is plaguing the world. Now we know our enemy. Now we fight our enemy. And how do we fight him? By faith. Have faith in God. Do not allow yourself to panic. Do not allow yourself to fear. Because as you see the servant of Elisha, he was so worried. He was so confused. What shall we do? And Elisha, Elisha had something within him. And that something, my friend, is within you and it's within me. That in this time, there are many of us, many of you have grown up in a church. Many of you have had, you've, you've listened to a countless number of sermons. But now is the time for you to take those sermons and bring them to the forefront of your battle. Bring them to the forefront now of the battle that we're facing so that we can fight and overcome this thing by faith. Hallelujah. And what is it that Elisha had within him? Elisha had the word of God within him. And you have the word of God within you this morning. The book of first, uh, sorry, John's Gospel, uh, St. John's Gospel, chapter number 1 says this, In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hallelujah, praise God. John is talking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's the Word of God that has come in the flesh. He's the Word of God that died at Calvary's cross. He was buried, but praise God, he's no longer dead, he's alive, he has risen, he's ascended unto the Father, and he's made you and I to sit together with him in heavenly places, praise God, praise God, that now as we function in this earthly life, we are not functioning from a position of defeat, friend, we have already overcome, the Bible says we've overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, that is why it's so important, especially even in this hour and I want to encourage you every day to break bread celebrate the communion of at the table of the Lord this is the bread that was given for you this is the blood that was shed for you praise God and you can take the blood of Jesus and plead it upon the doorposts and the lintels of your home plead it upon your walls plead it upon your windows and praise God that blood will protect you just as it protected the nation of Israel 
back in Egypt, that the blood of Jesus still speaks. The blood of Jesus has power to save you in this hour. Hallelujah. Praise God. And this is the thing. John says, in him, in the word, in Jesus was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Friends, you ought to let the word of God shine brightly through you. Let God's word shine through you. Let it shine through you. You believe in Jesus? He says out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters. Let those living waters flow and bring life to your home. Let the living waters of God's word flow and let it bring healing to your home. Let it bring restoration to your family. Probably during this time, it's an opportune time for God to restore your home, for God to restore your marriage, for God to restore your family, for God to restore your health. For God to restore you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our God is in the restoration business, friends. And he's the God of the miraculous. And I believe that God has a miracle for you in this hour. Don't be overcome by fear. Don't be overcome by doubt. You may say, yeah, but you know, when I look at around, all around me, things are just getting worse. Yes, that is like Elisha's servant. He looked and he just saw. All he saw was just the enemy that had surrounded them. Now, just as much as there were so many horses and chariots, there was something greater that was protecting them. These guys went and they seized a city for one man, for Elisha. And they surrounded the city. But what they didn't know was that God had Elisha covered. The mountains were full of horses and chariots of fire. And I believe the fire of God is about to fall in this hour. We are about to have uh, the greatest revival humanity has ever seen. Friends, uh, friends and people of God. Yes, the day of Pentecost, it has come. And friends, it is not over. It is not over. It is not over. That same spirit that descended in that upper room is the same spirit that is upon the church now. It's the same spirit that's about to catapult you forward in your faith. It's the same spirit that worked miracles in the book of Acts. Friends, the book of Acts is not over. God wants to act in this hour. He wants to act through you. He wants to act through me. He wants to act through everybody. Will you be a host that will say unto God, Lord God, if you will use anybody, use me in this hour. Use me to pray for somebody to come through. Use me. Use me, oh God. Use me to do your work because we have a work to do, church. We have a work to do. The coming of Christ is so soon. And yes, as we see what is happening around the world, the Bible tells us that these things will happen and Jesus the word of God has warned us about these things and he told us do not fear these things he told us not to fear and he says to us in his word he says cheer up brethren I have overcome them hallelujah and John even tells us that he says oh he tells us he tells us oh friend he tells us we have also overcome he tells us that as he is so are we in this world praise God the word of God in your spirit that come on that gives Gives you power and authority on this earth. Power to get the sick healed. Power to get the lame to walk. Power to get the blind to see. Power to get the deaf to hear. There is no situation that is too difficult for God. There is no spot that is too tight for God to enter. I believe that God will enter. No matter what your circumstance is this morning, God will enter it. And I believe that the power of God will flow and you'll see the miraculous. Because as we read this word from Genesis through to Revelation, we it becomes knowledgeable to us and it becomes revealed to us that the God of Israel, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, He is the God of the miraculous. When you look at the life of Jesus from His birth, it was miraculous. The, the announcement of His birth was a miracle. 
His birth in itself was a miracle. The fact that he rose from the dead was a miracle. And the miracles have not ended, friend. The Bible tells us there are many works that Jesus did that are not even recorded in this book. Because if they were recorded, there would not be enough books in the world to write them down in. So no matter what your circumstances, no matter what your challenges, I believe that God will come through for you this morning. My word to you this morning is have faith in God. The Bible says all things are possible to him who believes. God is a God who responds to faith, not to fear. Do not fear. You understand, friend, when you read the book of Job, you find that Job was a man who lived in fear and what he feared, it uh, befell him. So don't fear. Fear is actually, it is actually the opposite of faith. So just as faith will get you the breakthrough, fear will withhold it from you. Unbelief will withhold it from you. It will delay the process. It will stagnate the process. And what I want to share with you this morning, what God has laid upon my heart, is that as you see that, yes, Elisha was surrounded, the city was surrounded by the king of Syria and his armies, but God had his armies. He had his horses, his chariots. The angel armies surrounding and protecting Elisha and his servant. And that's my prayer this morning unto God. Is that God will open your eyes that you'll be able to see the protection of God. That God will cause you to see the salvation of the Lord that he will work for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to share with you something in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 19. Praise God. The Bible says, I, I just want to read about Zacchaeus. And the Bible from, we read from verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Hallelujah. I believe God is speaking to somebody this morning. And he says, make haste, come down. For I must stay at your house today. The word of God wants an entrance in your life today. The thing is, how desperate are you for your breakthrough? How desperate are you for your miracle? How desperate are you? So Zacchaeus made haste and came down and received Jesus joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to them, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Praise God. I love the tense of that, of that verse. It says, that which was lost. Past tense. It's like, this, you know, the, the songwriter of Amazing Grace. He says, I once was lost, but now I am found. Praise God. You are found by the grace of God. Friends, although there were so many armies that surrounded that city, the armies that were on the mountains were greater. So it doesn't matter what situation you find yourself in this morning. God's word to you is that there are many more miracles that God has laid up for you. Miracles, if I could put it this way, we are, we are living in the garden, in God's garden. And in this garden, the fruit is hanging, the miracles are hanging, the trees are loaded with miracles. Zacchaeus was one who was desperate. 
He was desperate for his miracle. It cost him. Normally you find a person of his stature. We find many people, rich and influential people. They are, um, they are too dignified to lose themselves for God. They are too dignified. You find that many people, they are, too, they, they are so afraid to lose their dignity. But you look at someone like King David, who danced before the Lord naked. That even when his wife rebuked him, he said, I will be even more undignified than this. Because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about your neighbor. It's not about your pastor. It's not about anybody else. It is about Jesus. It is about an encounter with Jesus. And friend, this Jesus he is Lord and Savior of all. The poor man needs Jesus. The rich man needs Jesus. The young man needs Jesus. The old man needs Jesus. So wherever you're watching me from, you could be sitting in your home, you could be sitting at work, or you're probably lying in a hospital bed. My word to you this morning is, what is the Lord saying to you? If you're sitting on that hospital bed, God is healing you now in Jesus' name. The power of God flows through you now in Jesus' name. You felt it through the service. I, I, I see somebody, you, 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 you've been having breathing problems and there's somebody else. You, 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 it, 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 it's... You kind of thought that it has to do with the heart. And the doctors also thought that it has to do with the heart. But it's not an issue of the heart. It's an issue of anxiety. I command that spirit of anxiety to loose you and let you go in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that there's miracles happening right now. There's breakthroughs happening right now. There are business people. You are watching me. Yes, you're sitting there. You're watching me. And you're worried about your business. You're worried because economically things are not, things don't appear to be going well. And you look at the economic status of the world. God says to you this morning, you are not supposed to function according to the economy of this world. You belong to another economy. It's called the economy of God. God will cause you to rise up in this hour, in this time. Do not fear, my friend. Yes, you may look at the exchange rate that seems to be falling, but we have something greater than the exchange rate. It is called faith. It is called faith. God is able to turn it around. I'm reminded of a, of a scripture in, in the Bible where there was a famine in the land and the, word, and the Lord gave a word to the servant of the Lord and he had said that the economic situation would turn around. And I'm telling you now, friend, yes, the economic situation for the world may not turn around, but it will turn around for you because the Bible says with God all things are possible. You serve a God who multiplies fish and multiplies bread. You serve a God who causes Kentucky to fall from the skies. You, call, you serve a God who, causes, who rains bread from heaven. That is the miracles that I'm talking about. Friends, our God, the miracles are not over. And God has a miracle for you. You've got to be desperate for your miracle. There are angels right now. I see there are angels that are working on your behalf for your miracle. Yes, there are angels that are working on your behalf for your miracle. Just as the angels of God encamped about Elisha, the Bible says the angels of the Lord encamp about the righteous. The angels of God encamp about you and they protect you 24-7 from sun up to sun down, from January to December, for all eternity. You are protected by the living God, the Lord, or the Lord of the angel armies is with you. The angels of God are moving on your behalf. Yes, yes, they are moving on your behalf right now. They are moving on your behalf right now. Do you remember at the pool of Siloam? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I see that there's a stirring of water. The pool of Bethesda, the water stirred. The waters were stirred. Hallelujah. The waters were stirred because the angel went in and whoever got in first was healed. Praise God. And there was one at Siloam, which means sent. As they were sent, the lepers were healed. My word to you is, what is God saying to you this morning? If you are sick, do something you couldn't do before. 
Do something you couldn't do before. There's somebody that's watching me right now. You've been too afraid. You've always been full of doubt. You've always been full of anxiety. And you, you kind of undervalue yourself. But God thinks greater of you. Go forth and pursue what God has laid upon your heart. You have no reason to fear. God is with you. Do not be afraid. God is not a God of fear. He's a God of faith. He moves where there's faith. So have faith in God this morning. My word to you is that for every challenge you face, God has a miracle. For every enemy you face, God has an answer. It's in this word, friend. So you've got to open this word. Be acquainted with this word. Get this word to live within you. Allow this word entrance into your heart. The Bible says in him, in the word is life. And the life was the light of men. And that is speaking about Jesus. And Jesus is in you. Christ in you. He is your hope of glory. Christ in you. He is the hope of your nation. Christ in you. He is your hope. He is your only hope. And when you have him as your hope, you have all that you need. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. The darkness could not comprehend the light of the world. So whatever you are facing, friend, if you can just allow the word to work in your life, whatever you are facing, it must go. It has to go because God has exalted this word. And he's exalted his word. He's exalted his son Jesus and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Coronavirus is not a king. Hallelujah. Coronavirus is not a king. Jesus Christ is king and Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there's someone here, you worried about your salary. The Bible does not speak of a paycheck gyra or a salary gyra or a wage gyra. The Bible speaks about Jehovah gyra, the Lord, my God.
Lord and Savior, or if you probably once, you know, you walked with the Lord, you served the Lord, and you kind of drifted away, you missed the mark, I want to invite you this morning to take this opportunity. Let us seize this opportunity. Let us seize this moment for you to receive the Lord Jesus in your heart. Hallelujah. And it's very simple. All you got to do is just pray the prayer of faith with me. Praise God. Would you bow your head and just close your eyes as we just pray. Heavenly Father, just pray and just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Lord Jesus, right now, I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe with all of my heart that God raised you from the dead. I invite you into my heart. I invite you to be my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that right now you have washed me with your precious blood. I receive right now your free gift of salvation. I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. I declare in the name of Jesus that from this moment on, I am born again. I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' mighty name, Satan, I remind you right now that from this moment on, I'm a child of the living God. I'm a new creation. You have no unsettled claims against me. The blood of Jesus speaks against you. I'm a child of the living God. I thank you now, Lord Jesus, that you are my master, you are my Lord, you are my Savior. And I embrace the life that you've given me now. In your precious name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen. Praise God. Well, if you prayed that prayer, we'd like to hear from you. And if you've got a testimony, if God has touched you through this telecast, we'd like to hear from you. Please, the details are showing up on the screen right now. And just after this telecast, we'll have all our other details, our email and our WhatsApp group, all our telephone numbers. Phone us, send us a WhatsApp, uh, tweet us on Twitter. Uh, send us a comment on YouTube, whatever it is, just, you know, just give us feedback. We, we just love to hear what the Lord has done for you, and we pray for you daily. And uh, if you've prayed this prayer of salvation, please send us your details. We have a love gift that we'd like to send to you with your details, with your postal details. Send that to us. And we want to share. We want to send you a gift. Amen. No charge. You just give us your details. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And would you just bow your head as I just release your, the, the benediction, the blessing of the Lord upon you. And this is one that we normally pray upon all our congregation. The Lord bless you, child of God. The Lord keep you in the palm of his hands. The Lord God of heaven and earth cause his face to shine upon you, his servants. Upon all the works of your hands, the Lord God of heaven pour out from his holy heaven the rivers of his grace and blessing upon you. The Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac and of Jacob, the Holy One of Israel, the Ancient of Days, cause the glory of his presence to be upon you, his child, upon your house, upon your home, upon your heart, upon your life. The Lord give to you the fullness of his shalom peace, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. In the name above every name, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Light of this world, the Glory of Israel, and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, in Jesus' mighty name, Amen, Amen. Until next time, this is Pastor Ricardo saying, I love you very much, I pray for you often, please keep in touch, and until next time, keep walking by faith and keep believing God for miracles, because this is your hour for miracles and I believe that very soon, very soon, many of you that are watching me right now, very, very soon, you'll see it, it will come to pass. Amen, amen, praise God. Bless you, love you lots.